I'm going to show you how I set up my milling machine before I start milling. This is just after I've got it out of the cupboard because generally it gets knocked in there. So I want to make sure that it's all tracking true uh, from left to right, front to back. For this, I've got a number of tools, um, a adjustable spanner. Uh, if you've got an ER20 collet system, uh, ER20 spanner. So it just fits around that nut. A set of ER20 collets. You'll need um, some sort of angle measurement. Uh, this one's a digital angle measurement. Or a square, just a standard square. And to test that it's all set up properly, I've got a, a nice dial indicator. So before we begin, we want to make sure that this is 90 degrees to the table. So I've just moved the table back, raise this as much as it will go, just set this to zero. And adjust to 90 degrees. There we go. That's set at 90 degrees. And you want to make sure that that is 90 degrees. Um, and to adjust that angle on this part of this machine, So you've got four Allen keys here that you adjust uh, to rotate the head. So you probably want to do that first. But there's a banded on here, there's a zero degrees, and you want to make sure that that's on zero uh, and that it's 90 degrees in this plane here. So that sets up perfectly 90 degrees then. to do with the camera anyway. So if I hold that against there, you can see 90. So that's set up to 90. And that's set up to 90 as well. Hold it against it. So that's set up to 90 as well. So you want to adjust and slacken off these until that reads 90 degrees. So you know that it's 90 degrees in this point and 90 degrees from front to back. Now that I know that this is 90 degrees and this is 90 degrees, I just want to make sure that the head is tracking at 90 degrees. What we want to do first though is put some molly slip on all the surfaces that are sliding to that. Been sitting in the cupboard a bit long. So I'm just going to spray here where the thread goes through. And on these flat surfaces as well. And then flat surfaces. Not 
too much on there. And some on the thread at the back. Just loosen that off and put that down. Also, you want to take this drawbar cap off and just lubricate in, in there. I use a PTFE lubricant to go into there. Um, it's got nylon gears in there and you can rotate from low through to high speed on there. These are the same gears I've had in it for a long time. I've had this machine uh, just over 10 years now. Just pop that cap back on that, raise it up, what you want to do is make sure it's tracking true by using the dial indicator. So I'm going to insert that into a collet. Select a suitable collet for that. So that one there. So this collet should slide nicely over the top of the take the nut off of that and you'll see there's a non-concentric circle inside there and the collet actually clips in to that so it holds it in place. You have to rotate it at an angle, pull it out at an angle and then push it in at an angle to get it to sit in that spring so it doesn't fall out. Then tighten it. You don't have to tighten these too much because you're not actually cutting with them. So only gently. So you should be able to rotate the machine and see the bottom of the dial indicator rotating. Just going to attach its arm so I can hold it steady. So I can rotate it like that, which is quite handy. Then I'm going to insert this arm into the dial indicator. It's got a flat on it, and that will go towards towards the screw. Somewhere, yep. There's a little spanner to tighten it up. You must make sure it's tight enough. That's on there, looks like it's uh, focused in all right. So I'll just move this along. So I'll reach both sides of that. And I want to make sure that this is at the same height as this. So the left hand side is at the same height as the right hand side. So I'm just bring that forward a bit. that. I'm going to take it off the same line all the way along there. So before I do that, you've got, you've got to make sure that this handle is tightened because this naturally drops if that's loose. And as you tighten it up, it brings that back square. So now we're all set up. I'm just going to put this into the zero position and I'm going to drop until that starts to touch. And as you can see, as it pushes down, I set it up to zero. So that's on zero now. So if I lift it up and drop it, it should go back roughly to zero. Let's just get that back to zero. 
So it should drop roughly to zero. Maybe I'm putting that in a different position. Now, so every time I drop it, it hits zero. Now, if I rotate that by holding the arm, hit it on the other side, that's as close to zero as you could probably get this machine. Then I rotate it around to the other side again. And it's on just, just under zero or on zero. And that's just over zero. So that's nice and set up from left to right. So that's tramming nicely. Right, so what, what I want to do now is test it from front to back. Although this arm is far too long. So I'm going to use a shorter arm that comes in the set. Undo that one and put this one with its flat. In the same position. Okay, now I'm going to drop that down. Hopefully, it's still in view. Yep. I'm going to rotate around so it does one rotation because there's a bit of tension in the spring in here then. So that's on zero there. I'll rotate that round to the other side. Hopefully it's not in the gap. It is in the gap. Bring the table forward and that's on zero there. So as I machine anything on this surface, the bottom is going to be um, parallel with the top. So now I can start milling with confidence. So if you've liked this video, please hit the like below and the subscribe button um, and check out dev255.uk. Also check out patreon.com forward slash dev255. Thank you for watching.